Hi, I'm Shi Tian Tian from Beijing, China. Thank you for the invitation and the opportunity to share our work at the Burlock keynote series. Our office is called DNA Design and Architecture. We've been mostly working in the rural context in China. Um, so today I want to introduce five projects, how architecture is creating a dialogue with its natural environment, at the same time also rediscovering the um, cultural context, cultural heritage, and restoring the rural identity. The first project is a tea house located at the center of uh, Damushan Tea Plantation in Songyang County, Zhejiang Province. The tea house is right next to a small uh, pond, a water reservoir. Um, at the corner of this pond, right next to an open pavilion, which is creating a tea corridor along the water. The main space um, to accommodate the public programs is a double height a building volume, um, setting back behind the five existing trees. And the overall uh, volume is taking just uh, is simply taking the form of uh, local traditional typology, the pitch roof form. And two private rooms are uh, extending towards the water. So the whole composition is trying to integrate with its um, the geometry of this sunken site, but also um, the natural environment with existing trees and also the water. So that's the main public space, which is double height and the two smaller um, tea houses with individual courtyards and also a meditation room could also function as a secondary um, access. So the making of this architecture is rather a simple gesture by um, borrowing the form of um, local building typology. Um, but what's more important in this um, space is really about the nature, the landscape, the trees, um, water and mountain um, beyond, which becomes the, the prominent um, elements in this space. We've also introduced a cut over the roof to indicate the orientation of the whole composition, but at the same time, you can also look up to the sky and to the tree canopy. Um, the concrete in this building is intentionally coated as with a darker color to um, give way to the, um, to the nature. So within the space, the um, different weather uh, or the light change during the different weather, uh, different time of the day, and also the um, the change of the season become the constant uh, rhythm within or atmosphere um, for this tea house. Um, the intention is to create a space that is shaped by both the architecture and nature. Um, the private room at the end of the building is a symmetrical space. On one side is natural uh, landscape, on the other side is more a is is rather a um, more um, meditating um, courtyard. This is not only uh, to create a different layers of the space, but also to blur the boundary of indoor and outdoor. And um, with this building, it's not only the main uh, space for tea functions, but also the a layer of courtyard uh, circulation like stair 
or corridors uh, surrounding this uh, different wrap, wrapping around these different programs to create a different layer of space in between and like a staircase or a lookout at the end of the walkway towards the water a corridor connecting both the public room and the private rooms A courtyard to look up to the tree canopy, um, which also bring a different um, sensation by the um, by different weather. The meditation room next to the private tea room at the end of the tea house is a lookout to the water and mountain to the nature. Um, the circular opening on the wall is a language borrowed through the Chinese um, traditional landscape garden. So during a sunny day in the afternoon, both the sun and its reflection in the water will cast the shadow and light, um, a mirrored image on the ground floor and the ceiling, which will make um, make it a space for to contemplate for time and nature. So we also um, wanted to extend the idea of uh, space, um, nature, light, and time, and to the um, landscape beyond the water. So um, underneath this tree. Um, across the water from the tea house, we have um, created this uh, uh, light uh, small installation underneath the canopy, which is also a space shaped by the tree canopy. Of course, um, we have um, polished the, um, the mirror and also testified for um, for load pressure for different activities. And then we replaced some of the um, stone slates on the ground floor by mirrored uh, slates, mi mirrored plates. So the light penetrating the tree canopy will cast a um, shiny effect through the reflection of the mirror. But at the same time, um, if you walk, if you um, approach closer, you will also discover a new, um, entire new space reflection through the reflection by the mirror. The second project is a Pine Park Pavilion in Huangyu Village, um, also in Songyang County. This is a project to um, provide facilities for visitors, for pedestrians, also for the villagers. So it becomes a meeting point for the uh, local villagers and visitors. Um, on the other hand, we also wanted to take this um, building as an introduction of the Huangyu um, pine resin production in its history. So this, the building is located next to a water pond and on the very linear uh, side of a pine park. Um, through this image, um, we wanted to introduce uh, a building that is diluted by its um, location, by its natural fabric. Um, and at the same time, uh, it's in, an integration of uh, building programs and also with uh, the trees to separate or to stretch up the, the building volume along this location, along the site. And each volume is indicating a different program or activity, which also reflect on the um, um, enclosure or openness of individual volumes. So on the other hand, you can also um, take the concept of Chinese bonsai to explain how the integration of building with the trees, with the landscape can become one entity.
um, this is the linear site and the building is next to the linear walkway uh, on the other side is the um, linear park and also the the water pond so the building volumes are sep separated or um, broken up into different segments um, along the topo On the other hand, um, when the building is um, defined by its structural rhythm of extending along this linear site, it's also intersecting with the pine trees on the site. So um, it's the integration of these trees and, um, and the different volumes um, make the tree also part of the architecture, part of the building. Um, this building, we have um, worked with pre-engineered timber structure to uh, to create a dialogue with the um, existing natural and um, pine trees on the site. And the rhythm of this um, wooden timber structure um, is making a contrast with the uh, natural fabric of these original pine trees. In a way, the building is um, merging with the Pine Park and the interior is opening up to the landscape, to the views. And the space is also a flexible um, uh, space, could be used as both indoor or outdoor. Um, in a way, the rhythm of this uh, structural pattern is reconfiguring the activity or the orientation of the of this um, pine park. So to create different walkways or uh, to channel the view corridors towards the mountain, towards the lake. In a way, the building um, volumes, the structure rhythm, the void and the solid and the trees and the water, the, the site, um, all together are becoming one bonsai, a large scale bonsai on this site. A next project, I want to um, introduce the Hakka Indenture Museum in Shizhong village, um, which is a a typical mountain village by Hakka family who immigrate, uh, immigrated to this region over 200 years ago across the mountain from Fujian province. So Hakka means guest family in the Chinese um, context. And when they relocate to a new um, area or region, um, everything's put down on paper means the contracts or land deeds or any um, um, business activities happening in the village will be documented on paper, um, which makes it a um, rich culture for Hakka society, also and um, functioning as a legal system for the Hakka uh, village. So the Hakka indenture collection in Shizhang village is the largest um, collection in the entire country. So we wanted to um, work with this cultural heritage and to build a, by building this new um, Hakka Indenture Museum, it, it will restore the village identity, but also to bring a new opportunity to restore a long lost masonry building technique in the village, in this re entire region. So we have um, worked with uh, three skilled masonry workers who also trained over a dozen young um, workers, um, villagers as uh, skilled workers on masonry technique. And this building is functioning as a monument for the Hakka indenture cultural heritage. At the same time, also a um, open pavilion for the villagers and visitors. And we see this um, 
local uh, traditional handmade building technique as a um, irreplaceable um, cultural heritage, but also art crafts um, produced or created by local villagers as um, anonymous artists. And the layout of the building is not only following you know, the topography of the um, this location, this site to connect the mountain into the village, but also at the same time, it's um, taking the form of local traditional um, courtyard buildings. Um, these are the traditional courtyard, like the multiple courtyard buildings, and which works as uh, the essential element in the in this um, Hakka Indenture Museum to create different voids or concentrated voids within the building. At the same time, it's also the extension of the walls, of the um, exterior walls, um, integrating the landscape at the same time to create the outdoor activity um, platforms to connect with the village. So this is the um, outdoor um, plaza for traditional um, performance. And the making of this building with a traditional masonry technique is has become a um, very unique accent in this building. And we wanted to focus on this. Uh, we, we wanted to take this um, very um, unique local accent as the um, most um, important characteristics for this building, also as a reflection of the local life and building tradition in this region. Um, so with the idea of uh, um, very concentrated light courts, courtyards becoming the light courts or um, skylights, um, bring in the light onto these walls. So the wall become the um, part of the exhibition space in this indenture museum. In a way, we also see this local um, building um, technique or uh, this very unique art crafts as a um, translation of the local life and local um, wisdom, how the local villagers have been working with the local um, the stones from the mountains and and to build houses in a way that is unique but also beautiful and very impressive. Um, so the interior space with this very special building technique, it's a, it, we were able to create a space that is almost um, archaeological, um, and by monitoring the light quality in a space, only the light. Um, uh, onto the walls, but um, less light within the space. So you're almost walking into a dark uh, room when you first enter, but eventually you, you, you become adjusted to the light quality. And at the same time, you also, um, the, the, water, the sound of the water by the creek, by the existing creek that's running through the building also becomes the part of the um, building element in this museum. So in a way, even though this very um, uh, almost like massive masonry um, building technique is softened by the light and the water, the sound of the water and the, the breeze of the air through the space. Um, we've also worked with the um, opening on the roof above the, the water creek. This will only allow the direct light to come into the space um, by noon uh, during the day, which will cast a direct light over the water. Um, the opening will collect the rainwater, but at the same time, by the installation of a uh, mist sprinkler um, uh, above the ceiling, above the roof, it also create a 
mist curtain or a rain uh, a water scene within a space to become a playful interactive um, installation in this um, indenture museum so actually through the museum um, it's not only the providing an opportunity to restore the local building, um, masonry building technique, but also become the opportunity to attract um, investors from Shanghai city to renovate the adjacent abandoned farmers houses into homestead business and also to provide um, new um, job opportunities and um, bring in new um, revenues to the village. And the water installation can also create a rainbow effect in the space during the summer days. The next project is Dushan Lishe Center in Songyang County, right next to um, Dushan Mountain, which is the iconic mountain of um, Songyang County and uh, Songyang River as the uh, mother river of the entire region. And this area is um, actually the gateway to enter Songyang County Urban Center, um, which is functioning as a visitor center, but also a meeting point for visitors and local residents. Um, at the same time, a meeting point for the uh, County Urban Center and its rural region, rural area in the, um, in the whole county. And the location of our um, leisure center, the site is a triangular wetland that has become a harbor for water sports activities along the Songing River. At the same time, um, this leisure center is um, a visitor center, but also working as a um, asset training uh, facility for the water sports in the region. So this. The whole um, uh, composition is a building volume with um, landscape walkways, promenades, but also um, integrating a infrastructure, the water dam uh, facility that creates a harbor um, connecting with the Songing River at the same time also dividing the space, the water level into um, a different two different levels um, on the site. So we have worked with um, all these elements together. Um, at the same time, it's also not just a building uh, scale, but rather a landscape and infrastructure scale and to integrate all these different uh, requirements and um, um, functions. So we worked with a C-shaped water dam and the building um, is composed um, or the build or rather the walkway is composed as a spiral shape that integrate the building volumes underneath the walkway with a shortcut, a um, west east axis uh, running through uh, connecting the parking garage and sports facility training gym visitor center and to this uh, water harbor for sports activities. So the um, building has become a landscape um, infrastructure or a public platform for the entire county and also for the visitors uh, to create this undulate walkways over the water. And um, the overall form is really trying to create this um, circular kind of a um, um, stretched out walkways, like a park over the water, above the water. And the coating of gradient transparency um, along the um, curtain wall, the glass curtain wall, 
um, has become a um, image to to play with the water scene, the the, the mist, um, um, watery um, surrounding and atmosphere. So that's the public walkway platform just for any outdoor activities. And it has become, this uh, leisure center has become very popular um, destination for the county uh, res urban residents. It's a popular outdoor activities um, starting from morning exercise at 4 a.m. to um, and late evening activities until midnight. And these open walkways along the um, above the water is creating this um, promenade or um, park. And with this um, shortcut or this um, axis cutting through different um, functions, different programs, and it's directing, well, it's going in between a space um, or right into the space to creating this um, outdoor and in and out rhythm along this walkway. And at the same time also uh, connecting different um, acti activities and programs along the walkway. And at the end, it arrives at this um, water harbor facing the Dushan iconic mountain. So the gradient of uh, transparency on the glass curtain wall um, is not only to create dialogue of the appearance with the water, with the misty uh, uh, scene along the water, but also become a um, curtain redirecting the views when you are inside the space, either to look out um, to the left or to the right. For example, in this um, educational space, um, when it's um, the gradient on one side becomes opaque, on the other side, it's more um, transparent to direct a view toward the courtyards instead of the water. And the space is also accommodating a training facility for a local um, water sports young athletes. So at the end of this spiral uh, space is stretched up to the second floor, becomes a multifunctional room, also as a meditation room with a panoramic view um, to its surroundings. And in this room, we have worked with a small opening above uh, on, on the ceiling, at the center of the ceiling to uh, capture the trajectory of sunlight um, in different seasons, different months and different hours. So here you could tell the space um, becomes a sundial uh, to indicate the time and also the trajectory of sunlight. And with copper plates um, on the ground surface, we have documented how the light is coming through the space. For example, this is the um, winter light coming uh, running through the day um, at the far end of the space. And in summer days, um, the sunlight is almost running through the, um, the central axis of the room. And each uh, trajectory is indicating that um, during different months, um, at the same hour, how the sunlight is actually projecting on a different location, different spots on the ground surface. Um, well, in, in, in general, this is the idea that we wanted to introduce how uh, a meditation space is not only you know, about the surrounding, about its, uh, what you can see um, with the mountain, with the water, uh, next to the site, but also it's it's a basic um, uh, rhythm that is um, indicated or defined by the pattern of sun and earth in our planet. Dushan Leisure Center, the design is not only um, to provide required program or functions, we also um, 
wanted to accommodate different activities. So this facility actually becomes a meeting point for urban and rural residents and visitors. Um, at the same time, we also take this building as the opportunity to indicate how, um, when sitting in a, in a nature, how the nature and architecture can work together to reflect or to reveal um, the life happened, um, or for example, the agriculture as the, uh, the pattern how we lived in the nature. Um, the last project is <clears throat> a, um, again, a tea space. Um, it's in the neighbor Jinning County. Um, Hui Min Tea Space is um, located in Chimu Chimu Mountain, which is the um, the main mountain in in the neighbor Jinning County. And this space is functioning as a um, tea production space, tea workshop, and also. Um, a tea tasting facility for like a tea house for visitors. So basically it becomes a um, integrated um, program for both local um, visit villages and also visitors. At the same time, it's also a cultural um, facility an educational facility to introduce the tra traditional Hui Min tea making process to the visitors. And Jinning County is the only um, sure minority county in the entire country. So in this case, the sure culture is also integrated into this um, tea space. It's providing not only as a um, cultural space, but also a leisure um, platform for the lo local uh, villagers for community activities and programs. Um, the whole building is um, actually composed as very simple um, rectangular box sitting on this flat location um, on the mountain. And it's facing north-south orientation with three parallel spaces. Um, tea making space um, facing west and tea tasting space, space facing north. And the central visitor corridor um, as an open pavilion to invite visitors to observe the traditional tea making process in this building. That's the building um, following the um, uh, the um, terraced plantation um, typology uh, topography and also it, as a reflection of the terrain. The traditional tea making process in a workshop by local skilled um, tea makers, villagers, together with the tea plantation and tea picking process in a plantation in the, in the fields, become the most um, intuitive tea life performance um, to showcase the trad traditional way of making women tea. The west facing workshop is. Um, protected from the direct sunlight by a um, perforated wall with pictograph uh, blocks. Traditionally, uh, Shi minority only had um, a speaking language without a written system. So pictograph is the symbol of the uh, uh, written symbols of the language. So we have been working with these um, pictograph um, as the cultural um, image to um, uh, it's arranged from the bottom as land to the top as the sum. So the whole wall is reconfiguring how the Shi minority people have lived in the mountain um, with their um, agriculture and hunting activities. And with the space, we also worked 
with eight light tunnels to introduce the light coming into the central um, visitor lounge. Um, so here I wanted to um, take a boss to introduce the traditional Chinese agricultural calendar is actually based by 24 solar terms instead of for 12 months. So these 24 terms are really indicating the pattern of agricultural activities during the year. And the summer solstice um, is the most celebrated festival around the world by different cultures and different um, um, religions. Um, in ancient China, we also work instead of 24 hours in a day, we worked with 12 hours, zodiac hours, based on activity patterns of different animals. So from sun sunrise, it's the rapid hour, um, on the summer solstice day um, and horse hour by noon and then at the sun uh, sunset time it's the rooster hour. So we wanted to integrate all these um, uh, traditional knowledge into this building and so the building with the simple rectangular form not only functioning as a um, activity uh, space, but also delivered the cultural message of the agriculture, nature and tradition. And eight light tunnels become the um, functional blocks to bring in light into the central uh, visitor corridor. At the same time, the orientation of each um, light tunnel is based on the sunlight angle of different zodiac hours during during the summer solstice day on this location. So you could also see this as a um, sculpture or monument to indicate how the sunlight um, become frozen um, by the different zodiac hours during the summer solstice time. Um, in a year. And with this orientation, the direct sunlight of different of each zodiac hour could only come in through its corresponded um, tunnel, not with the others. So this will make the space actually um, on the summer solstice days with the light coming into the space, it's literally going through a um, different um, um, light tunnel by different hours. That's the known um, horse hour. And then at the end, it's the rooster, um, the sunset hour. So this T space is the sundial to indicate the pattern of time and light uh, running through the space um, with these light, light tunnels capturing um, time and light during summer solstice. And the building with the thin layer of water on top of the roof, the building has become a, um, the volume has um, disappeared when look above from the, from the hilltop and the building becomes a, um, a statue, a monument to celebrate the summer solstice. At the same time, it's also indicating a um, pattern of how in the ancient time, the time is and uh, the, the hours are defined by patterns of the other animals. So we have been, you know, in the ancient time, we've also lived our life by observing the patterns of nature, about uh, patterns of other species 
and we understood that we are coexisting, co-sharing our planet with the other species. So with this tea space in the mountain, in the nature, um, the architecture is also the monument documenting um, the life pattern, how we lived in nature in this place. Thank you.